Hi guys, okay, so having a real frustrating moment because I just got a major bad review on my profile. You can go to my profile from the link below and go read it yourself if you'd like, but I am gonna read it to you off my profile and um, tell you guys the scenario of what happened. So this is actually a great renter of mine. I have no issues with her and in fact, I don't blame her for leaving this bad review. However, I should not suffer the repercussions of this bad review because this was not my fault and is not anything that's in my control. So here's what happened. Um, you know, I'll start off by reading the messaging. So this renter, she rented my Corvette for one day. She decided that she wanted to keep the car for another day, which uh, the day before her original reservation was going to end, she contacted me and asked me, you know, exactly what the cost of renting the car for another day was gonna be, at which point I told her, aside from the day rate, I can't tell you the exact cost because I don't know what the trip fees and the insurance, but you just go through the change request process. It'll show you the total before you have to confirm that trip. Because of course I want the extension, so doing my best to provide customer support and helping her extend. Um, and so this was at about 9 p.m. the night before. Her reservation was going to end 7 a.m. the next day. Then the next morning, and then I guided her on how to extend it. The next morning around 6.46, I got the extension request. So between 6.46 and 7 a.m. is when you have time to approve the extension request. So that's well, roughly about 14 minutes or so. By the time I saw the extension request, because it was such a tiny time frame, I missed it. Not to mention it was quite early in the morning as well. So, and I missed it just by three minutes because by the time I messaged her, it was 7.03 a.m. So basically in that situation, when the renter wants to keep the car, what you have them do is book a new trip and then you contact support and have them merge the two trips together. So it turns back into one reservation. So really easy. So I reached out to her and I said, um, go ahead and book the new one. And then, so she did it right away. There was no issues there. She rebooked it. And then, so whatever, renter, rental is all said and done. And this is on May 28th, okay? So last Friday, June 5th, I get a message from her saying the following. It says, hi, Saima, I, just not I was just notified through Capital One that I didn't receive my full deposit on the second trip, two consecutive days with the Corvette per our combo. Um, I went through, the went through the tour app, sorry, spelling errors, and looked at the charges on both book trips. There was $160.54 taken out of the $500 deposit that shouldn't have been taken out. I will send you the screenshots so that you can see what I'm talking about. Can you please refund me the $160.54? Please let me know if there are any reasons why this should have happened. Um, and then I messaged her back saying, oh no, that's so weird. So when it comes to anything that's billing related, that's all done directly through Turo system. As a host, we have zero access to charging a guest for a trip or refunding in any way. Basically, all we do on our end is set our prices and Turo handles the rest. So in this case, you would need to get in touch with Turo's billing line. When you call the number below, there should be an option for billing and hopefully they can get this resolved for you ASAP and answer any questions you might have. And then I included the support number because as we all know as hosts, you really don't have access to issuing a refund or especially when it comes to deposits. In fact, on our end, we can't even really see what a guest paid for a trip aside from the actual day rate that they paid for and any trip extras, right? So anything that was a trip fee or anything that they chose for insurance, we can't see that. Anything that they put down for a deposit, we can't see that. So if you're a renter out there, please bear with us because these are all things that we cannot see. And when you rent on the platform, you are transacting directly with Turo and then Turo pays us out as hosts. So that's sort of how it works. But I think from what I've seen in my history of doing this, most people make the assumption that, you know, the transaction is being done directly with the host and we as hosts have controls over being able to refund and adjust pricing and things like that, um, which we don't once a transaction has been made. We as well have to get in touch with support. And especially because this issue was deposit related, we really don't have any controls. Um, so then the following day on Saturday evening, late evening, she messaged me saying, 
So do you know how I can get a hold of an actual person from Turo to get this resolved? The number forwards me to an online chat, which I messaged and never got a response. Ah, Turo, come on. Um, so I got this message Saturday e evening, then 10 a.m. Sunday, I saw it the following morning. So I got back to her and I said, I've been having issues with their support as well since they downsized uh, due to the pandemic. So I tried to explain that, like, you know, their support, like, it is lagging a little bit, but just kind of because of everything that's happened. And then I even offered, I said, what I can try to do on my end is email my host support line and send them a message to get in touch with you. They usually take about two days or so to get back to me. And I put two days or so because just support has been um, not its usual self lately. Other than that, I would try to call back on Monday as well. I'll get that email out and I'll let you know as soon as I get a response from them. So I really, really tried to do my best to help this girl. I mean, I felt bad if her deposit wasn't being refunded in the way that it should. And quite frankly, I don't even really know what's going on with that transaction or why there was a discrepancy. Like I couldn't even tell her because I don't know. Um, so I did my best to help her as much as I could um, and then, just a couple of minutes ago, I was greeted by a lovely review from her on my profile, and I'm gonna read it to you guys. So because we merged two trips together, she was still able to leave two separate reviews. So I'm gonna read you guys the one that she left on May 29th, which was when her rental ended. So she left me a five-star review, and it said, great experience renting from Simon. Not only is her car amazing, but the whole rental process was a breeze. We had so much fun with the car that we decided to extend our trip. Saima was very helpful in making sure the trip extension went smoothly. Thanks so much, Saima and Toro. Ah. Okay, so that was the initial review she left before all this deposit issue came up. And then I got the review today, which as you can see, it's huge. And that is horrible because it's taking up so much real estate on my profile and it's not my fault. Um, so it's a one star. And here's how it reads. I'm really disappointed to have to write a bad review. My whole experience with renting went so well until I didn't receive my whole deposit back and was charged double what I was supposed to be for my trip. I had made a change to my trip and extended it another day, which I was told by Saima that it would not be a problem and she would combine the reservations. My add-on trip cost was only supposed to be $160 for the extra day and I was charged over $320. When I messaged to get this resolved, I was told that I need to contact Turo directly and she has no power to get this resolved herself, which yes, true. I have contacted Turo, but I can't get a live person on the phone and they have forward, forwarded me to this chat that I messaged my issue and never got a response. I messaged Simon again, letting her know that I couldn't get a hold of Turo and asked her to help, but I received no response. I'm very disappointed that I was charged double what I should have been and no one made an effort to get it resolved. I have rented from Turo many times, which she has and she has all great reviews, done trip extensions and never had a problem. Obviously their quality of service has changed so I will not be using them again. Oh, so that is like such a heavy review and the part that bummed me out is in here she said that she tried to reach back out to me and didn't receive a response, which is not true because I did message her back right away. Um, and it's all right here to prove it. So when she told me like, you know, how can I get a hold of a live person? I did respond back to her the next morning just saying, hey, like, I don't know, like we're having that same issue on our end as well. The only thing that I can do is contact host support on my end and see if I can get this resolved for you, which I did. I did email support and I have not heard back from them myself. Um, and so, you know, I did, I think I just out of like frustration, I mean, I feel bad for the girl. That's not her fault. It's not my fault. So, I mean, I did just email her and I said that, Hey, you know, I just saw your review on my profile. I'm super sorry that you're experiencing this. And I really wish there was something I could do on my end. I was like, I, however, I did want to let you know that I did reach out to support on my end as well through my host support. And I haven't heard anything about back either. And I just, I reiterated that again, if I do hear anything, I'll be sure to let you know. And then, I mean, I just had to tell her, I was like, you know, you mentioned in the review that uh, you messaged me again when you couldn't get a hold of support and that I did not respond. So maybe you had missed the message above, but I did get back to you and I really made the effort to get a hold of support on your behalf. 
And I hope that this also proves that I really don't have any access to refunding or deposits. And then, you know, I just kind of went on to explain how the host side of things look and how we can't really see anything aside from the portion of the transaction that has to do with us, which is our day rates and trip extras. Um, so just a real bummer and it sucks because this is on my profile and I really, really hope that Turo is going to take this down since this is not my fault or has anything to do with the way my transaction went with the guest. Um, and I really did, It's which is again why I like to keep things through messaging because it's all documented here. I really did make the effort to help this girl out. I guided her on how to contact support. I reached out to support on her behalf as well. I mean, as a host, I did not have to do that. It's not my responsibility. A guest should be able to reach support, especially if they've made multiple efforts. Um, so I don't know, to be continued guys. And this is just a really unique circumstance because she left two reviews, you know, one of five star describing her experience with the actual renter, rental, which was great. And I had a great experience with her too. I left her a great review. Um, and I don't think it's her fault, so I'm not really blaming her. Um, but yeah, this sucks. This sucks. If you guys want to see the reviews, you'll see them on my profile. The first one and the second one just match up the names. You won't be able to miss it. Um, but yeah, just a bummer. I hope this gets resolved for her. I will definitely keep you guys posted um, as to what happens. But uh, really hope I can get this review taken off my profile. I know in the past history it's been tough to get re reviews removed. But again, this one doesn't have anything to do with me. And I almost wish that there was a separate place where renters could review the Turo platform, you know, through the rental experience and not just a review on the host side of things. So I'll keep you guys posted. A real bummer that, you know, a host should have to pay the price of support. Um, I don't know. So that's just what that is. You know, of course, I do understand on Turo's end with the downsizing because of everything that's happened and the delay in support and things like that. In fact, I've noticed an improvement over the last couple of days. So maybe they're revamping support and adding on more people. I really don't know. It's hard to say, but um, yeah, it's a tough situation for everyone, but I should not have to pay the price for this because I provided a good experience and I don't have those controls. So I wanted to share that experience with you guys Give me your thoughts. Let me know how your experience has been with support or if you guys have experienced anything like this. And if you've ever received a bad review because of a person's experience with the platform, were you able to get that review removed? Um, so let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching, guys. It's been a rough one for me, but I'll be back with you guys tomorrow. Take care. Bye, guys.